Just because we've got autism, we're not hard to work with. We're all liable to work on something. They basically didn't think I could manage a workplace with having additional needs, 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 needs. The voices you've just heard are from Britain's hidden community of autistic job seekers, a group of neurodiverse young adults lost in the system of the country's traditional recruitment methods. A largely unrecorded number throughout history, the National Autistic Society estimates that a mere 16% of the UK's 700,000 autistic adults are in full-time work, despite 77% saying that they want to access a career. Dominique Mazdam has been looking for a job for over a year, previously being dismissed from her role as a hotel waitress due to managerial concerns around her ability. She believes some employers need to look beyond misinformed stereotypes around the condition. I'm at an age where I should work. <laughs> I should be able to work. I've been trying to take interviews and same things are happening. They always say, you don't look like it. I find that really annoying because not all disabilities are visible. I went for an interview recently. They basically didn't think I could manage a workplace with having additional needs and no one should say to me, I can't do it. They should see. Obviously in some jobs I probably can't do it, but they need to see that I can't. They can't just say I can't because they don't know. Businesses have the freedom to develop their own inclusive recruitment policies. However, existing legislation should restrict the circumstances in which they can ask an applicant condition-related questions, allowing less room for disabled candidates to be unfairly screened out. To get a taste of how businesses go about diverse recruitment, I reached out to a number of Britain's high-profile employers, receiving an abundance of press releases detailing inclusive and non-discriminatory hiring policies. After a year of interviews and unresponsive employers, Dominique's mum, Nicola, feels some of these companies are using these policies to protect themselves. They need to tick the boxes, they need to say they're inclusive, they need to look like they're inclusive, but when it comes to the crunch, they'll probably sit there thinking, you know, without really understanding her, it's going to be too much effort on their behalf they probably think it's too much of a risk for them I mean it'd be different if they if they just contacted and said thank you very much but you know someone that we've got someone else but nothing just to hear nothing is just it's just horrible but what does true inclusivity look like and what can employers be doing to become more effectively inclusive I traveled to Northampton to meet Thomas Cliff founder of Cafe Track a local enterprise offering work experience to autistic adults helping them develop core working skills I met Thomas in the cafe to discuss the barriers these individuals are faced with and how he is dedicating his life to educating businesses on neurodiversity in the workplace. You know, awareness is probably the number one barrier. Underneath that, there's lots of smaller barriers, but if if companies feel there's no one there to support them, they're probably going to take the less risky choice in some ways. And also, I think we have to change the culture of a lot of people currently do not feel comfortable disclosing to employers because they fear they're going to be prejudiced in the job. One of the, the, the biggest difficulties people face is that people will say you don't look autistic or how can you be autistic if you can do this and there's that massive misunderstanding of of what it actually means that little education piece can make a huge difference i think to better educate businesses in the county track offer a training consultancy service which educates firms on becoming more accessible for autistic staff members for thomas an open mind is key for this training to be successful it's a willingness from an employer to treat someone as an individual is is the absolute core and from that you can then work with everything else because that willingness then indicates They will make small changes. There's a lot said about the wording that you use. Is it an autistic person? Is it a person with autism? Some would rather have condition. And for me, it's about the person's name. That can be challenging. And I think employers are scared of getting it wrong. So they do nothing because at least then they can't be sued or or, or, or looked at negatively. But it can't just be a tick box exercise. It can't be a, we're doing this because we have to or because it looks good. It has to be a, we believe that the people of different abilities are going to help our company grow and and that's the the biggest message that that we give to people earlier this year the all-party parliamentary group for autism made recommendations to the government to close the employment gap in an exclusive statement chair cheryl gillen revealed these to be appointing an autism employment champion in each government department and encouraging employers to work towards schemes to improve employment but what work is being undertaken to tackle the issue on a more individualized scale I'm here outside the care trade offices in London, where today I'll be meeting Gemma Deer, manager of the Autism Project, a two-year programme which supports autistic 18 to 25-year-olds into employment through placements across the capital city. I'll be speaking to Gemma about the training they offer to help individuals better prepare for the workplace. The majority of our work is around those soft skills, so things like confidence, 
effectively communicating, being motivated to go to work, working in a team and understanding the rules around employment and what it means to go to work. Another part of what we do is teaching our students to know their rights. So things like disability law, reasonable adjustments, so they understand that there are rights that they have. For every one of our students, by the time they get to our the end of our second year, they are all so much more confident. They understand what it is to be at work. They understand what their skills are and what they can bring to a workplace. So I think from what we do and how we work with them, they're set up for, you know, for life, for their career. And it's all about being independent as well. To understand the effectiveness of the programme, I sat down with students Toby Kempton and Ashwin Kilbert, both of whom work on placements with Suffolk Playhouse and St Thomas's Hospital, respectively. Since you've started here at Care Trade, how yeah. would you say you've changed in terms of confidence? I definitely think I've gained a lot more confidence. I've met loads of different people. I've worked in completely different placements, which has helped me gain more confidence. Whereas um, last year, when I first started, I was a bit shy, didn't know what to expect. The experience I got is really good. I managed to communicate with a lot of people more comfortably. It's good because it helps me to keep motivation that I really want to work more. That helps me to be more proactive and it makes people think I'm more reliable. According to Dame Cheryl Gillen, we're still some way from being an entirely inclusive nation. However, it's clear those in this space are working incredibly hard to change perceptions of Britain's neurodiverse community and championing a future where businesses follow the blueprint of leading inclusive employers to change the face of the spectrum forever. I wouldn't want to be a business who doesn't engage now because they're going to get left behind. Once you understand autism, you see that the barriers aren't really there. Give us a chance that we can like provide you what we can do and hopefully we can make your company or your like, department better. For more information and to hear more from those affected, head to the official Changing the Spectrum website.